Hi everyone. It's Rita from Miss Rita to the Rescue. And we are here for Cricket Chat. It's Tuesday, March 23rd. Wow, we're down to the last few days of March. Unbelievable. And it is beautiful out today here in New England. Um, I have the window open. I hope it's not going to be too distracting because there's someone getting their roof done down the street and it just echoes. So if it becomes too distracting, you all let me know and I will close the window. <laughs> Good morning. So how are you all today? It's a beautiful day here. It's that nice early spring day where it's kind of cool, but it's sunny and I'm hoping that it will warm up to the 50s or so. Good morning to all my friends. I see Penny. Um, I saw Shirley, Diane. Good morning, Regina and uh, Shelly and Linda. Good morning to you all. Whoops, got my finger in front of there. Hi, Nikki. Um, and I hope you're all doing well. I am doing well myself. These days are so long, though, because of the extra light. Um, so I've been really, really tired, and I got a really good night's sleep last night. I hope you guys are doing um, well in that way. I can't believe how um, much, how what a difference a year makes. As I look back on my memories, I see all of these warnings and closings and whatever right around this time last year. And uh, it was a scary time. So I'm so glad that it, we're starting to see light at the end of the tunnel. Um, isn't that great? Let's see. So today... We are going to be making some really easy Easter cards. And the great thing about these cards is I have formatted them to, um, to fit with any machine. Uh, they are size A2 cards. And um, I have basically... I lopped off the back of the card so that you can do this hi carrie so you can do this through um oh you did <laughs> is that paralita um who who just said they bought a sublimation printer hi wendy midge good morning hi deborah ann so these are great because no matter what machine you have you're going to be able to cut them um and i'm going to show you how i did this so that if this if you ever happen upon a card that you want to change you can learn this technique and you can do all kinds of different things so what i did is very simple but what i did was i created a card front and then I used patterned paper in the back. And because I have one-sided patterned paper, I left room for a sentiment there. We could even put a sentiment here, but that's kind of a different technique. So I want to show you this technique because it opens up a world of cards that you otherwise, um, if you if you um, cut them out. Otherwise, they look a little bit different when you cut them out, especially things like this one, where it's very, very close to the edge, makes it very hard when you're folding and gluing this card. But by changing it to more of a top layer over a backing, this card comes out very nice and it doesn't look um, weird with the folds, right? Um, I'm going to give you this... Uh, this file for free it there all these images came from Cricut design space they're older images they're not up and coming i just wanted to take a few minutes to tell you about some other things that i've been working on before we jump in um and uh so so yeah, so I want to take a few minutes <laughs> for that. Um, so as some of you may know, I've been playing around a lot with crepe paper um, and also sublimation printer. We did a show on sublimation printing um, yesterday with the mug press. So that was really fun. If you didn't see it, definitely go back and look for it. But um, moving forward, hi, Susan. Moving forward, I... 
it's springtime and I need flowers in my life. And I don't, all of my bunnies, the cottontail bunnies in, in my neighborhood have eaten most of my um, plantings. I probably should go back and plant some more, but I haven't had a chance. And I always forget in the fall <laughs> to do that. So, um, so instead, um, I have resorted to making my own um, flowers. And so uh, I have been uh, a member of Leah Griffith. I don't know if you're familiar with Leah Griffith, but she makes the most gorgeous and accurate looking uh, crepe paper flowers. They're very, very um, fine like finely done and um, you do need special crepe paper for them and she takes you through all of that but she does you know have a membership that she charges for uh, for that um, so I started looking around and started thinking about what kinds of flowers and in the past I've done a lot of flowers I've done daffodils and poppies um, daisies and sunflowers peonies uh, or peonies um, and what else have we done chrysanthemums and pansies so I love 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 flowers I did hydrangeas um, but I've never made those really large large um, flowers I've never made those really large ones that you see sometimes on Pinterest um, and sometimes on uh, you can see them on like YouTube a lot and, and I, I've always liked them, but I've never been able to find a proper uh, cricket version of that, like cr cricket, uh, proper cricket, uh, what am I looking, saying? File for that. So I decided to venture out from cricket and do it by hand. And the result is this. It is a giant, um, let me back up so you can see the whole thing. It's a giant poppy. I'm going to call it a poppy. And it's done with crepe paper. And I want to show you the back. The back is one of those plastic chargers that um, I have a lot of them um, and it's like left over from Christmas and so I just put this together yesterday and I really like it so I want to show you how to do this so if you don't mind um, tomorrow we'll go over how to make this um, with crepe paper but we won't be using the Cricut we'll be using the Cricut to make flowers going forward but um but I I kind of wanted to just do this ginormous one but I haven't been able to find a file that will suffice for that I'm still looking though so that doesn't mean that I won't find so tomorrow we'll be making uh those giant crepe paper flowers and um and then also, what else do we have? I have some print and cut Easter cards. On Friday, I would like to do a um, explosion box, a very large explosion box that is Easter themed. It opens up and there's a little basket on the inside. This is not my file. It is from Dreaming Tree and I will post a link for that. I think I checked it was like $2.50 or you might want to buy it as part of one of their deals where you um, buy like bundles and you get something for free. I think they do have um, a free thing. Um, yeah, so any uh, someone, I think it was Lynn Collins that said something about the master class. Yeah, Lee, I'm going to close the window. Hold on. So, yeah, sorry. Leah, um, has like a master class it takes a couple of months to get to get to through and you have to sign up and you have to be a member of hers and all of that and um so there's uh what's the bunny and egg on your desk oh I'll mention it in a second um so you for Leah's stuff she recommends this heavy crepe paper or the light crepe paper that's made in Germany for tomorrow 
um, because we need so much of it, I am going to be using this very large roll of crepe paper, which I found. I must have ordered it at some point, and it was up stairs uh, in my part of my vault. And so I found a couple of rolls, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, I will tell you that I got these from Paper Mart dot com papermark.com and they're very inexpensive they were like two or three dollars for this big big roll and um, I'm thinking you can get at least you definitely get one if not two of these giant flowers from one roll which is pretty good that's kind of like um, less than five dollars if you consider the background I did use Leah's yellow for the inside of the flower and then this this is just simply one of those plastic. You can also use paper plates, but I actually didn't have any paper plates, so I thought this would would do nicely. So we're going to do that tomorrow, and if you don't know where to find the crepe paper or you only have the really fine uh, Leah crepe paper, you might want to consider getting this Chinese paper. Um, the, the stuff from Leah is made for her in Germany, and it is beautiful stuff beautiful and we'll work with it later so um and someone was asking about these mandalas we did these last week i think um and they are in design space they're under holiday mandalas throughout the year um so you can find them there um so so in they're just paper that i've glued and uh, really cute. We also did a shamrock and, and a couple of other things as well. So um, so let's get started on this project today. It is, um, it's just kind of a reworking of some older uh, Easter cards. Um, I particularly love this one with the chicks. That's always been my favorite. But when I go to cut them, um, the thing about this card in particular is it's a very, very thin line when it cuts out. So normally it has a backing to it, right? And there's a score line. And unfortunately, when you cut it out, this part here at the very, very top, it tends to not glue well because it's where the fold is. And it really is frustrating because it takes a really pretty card and turns it into a little bit of a nightmare. So I decided that I was going to reconfigure these cards um, so that they're just card fronts. So here's another technique for um, for taking Cricut graphics and turning them into graphics that you can use. This is a great um, project for people who own a Joy, um, but it works for all machines. So let me just save this and we'll start from scratch and I'll show you what I mean. So here we are new and if I went to images and I typed in Easter card um, in the images, I will get some Easter card. I will get some cards. Now, these are slightly different than insert cards because you do use glue with them. And here you go. Here's one of the ones that I looked. And very interestingly, I'm getting a lot of Christmas cards, um, probably because I put in Easter and then the word card. If I just typed in Easter, maybe I would get some uh, more relatable <laughs> things and you get a lot of these really cute um, eggs but not a whole lot of cards but here are some so let's look at this one Easter blessings I'm going to click on this the eye with the circle and I'm going to go to view image sets this brings me to the image set called Simple Holiday Cards, and this is actually a really great image set to know about. There's stuff from uh, Thanksgiving, Halloween, Christmas, New Year's, Easter, Valentine's, and Mother's and Father's Day. There's something for everybody in this card set. There's 50 different cards. Well, probably 49 because this one here is an envelope so in here we can choose this bunny we can choose this one here is like a bunch of easter figurines here's our easter blessings um uh, let me see where's more here's the bunny crossing one 
Um, this one just says Happy Easter. So there are already one, two, three, four, five images that we can uh, reconfigure for this. And let's see if we can't find also, we're going to go back and we're going to look for in under all images, I'm just going to type the word under image set Easter, because I want to find that one with the little bunny, the bunnies on it. So here are all the Easter uh, images under image set. I'm trying to remember where I got that Easter bunny one. Ah. Uh... No, I don't see it. Isn't that strange? Maybe it was on that one, but um, maybe it's under Easter 2010 because that one was uh, popular 10 years ago. Um, <laughs> and no, I don't see it. There are a couple of things in there that I want to show you. Um, all right. So I don't see that one, which is weird. Um, so I'm going to go back to holiday. Let's try a holiday. And maybe I just overlooked it. Uh, okay, let's try these. This one here again. So I'm looking for the one. Actually, this one would make a nice uh, Mother's Day or Easter one. It's got lilies on it. But I'm looking for the one with the chicks. And I can't see. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Okay, so let's pull all these in here. They all seem to be under ho holiday cards. Simple holiday cards image set. And you can um, find them using image set. I will also give you the file. So if you're worried about having to find them, I'll get you that file. They all come in with envelopes. You guys know how I feel about envelopes. So, um, so and they all come in sort of weirdly sized. So what I normally would do with this is I would just ungroup it, get rid of the envelopes, I buy my envelopes, and I would regroup, and then I can size the image like this to whatever size I want. Now, um, if you want, I tend to make these cards into an A2 size card. A2 is very much the same as like an insert card size, which is um, four and a quarter by five and a half. And it, it, it actually can be cut from an eight and a half by 11 inch uh, sheet of paper and also can be cut on the joy. But the thing about the joy, and this is a good example, is that the Joy does not do scoring. And then you see where the scoring is here. It's very, very close to where you're going to be um, cutting this out. So it could cause a little problem, and you have to be very careful. And the way that these um, work is that they have basically this background piece, and then you glue it to the inside. Now, um, remember, too, if you wanted to do these straight, just like this, Perhaps you want to put a sentiment in there. I'm going to show you a really quick trick on how to flip the card so that you can put a sentiment in. You're going to just select it, and then you're going to choose flip up here. All right, and we're going to flip this one vertically because we want for that it's it's a vertical card and we want to see the inside of the card so here is our inside of the card and if you wanted to put a sentiment in here like i don't know happy easter auntie anna will do like this and you can change it to uh a writing font, and then once you have it there, you can resize it like this. Once you like what you've got here, then you can then select the whole thing. Actually, what you have to do is detach that score line and then select the whole thing and attach. And now I have a personalized card, but um, you could not do this on the Joy because A, um, it's a little too big, and B, it has the scoring. So what I like to do is I like to take the card. Let's move this one over. Take this card, get rid of the envelope, and 
We don't really need this piece, and I'll tell you why in a second, okay? So I take this card, and I'm gonna size it the way that I want it to be. An A2 size card, remember, is five and a half by four and a quarter. Right now, it's actually sized exactly the way I want it to be because the width is eight and a half. Half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So this is actually a perfect size for an A2 card. What I'm going to do is I am going to detach that score line. All right, and then I'm going to take a shape, a square. All right, now I'm going to unlock it and I'm going to make it the so larger than the back of this, okay? Larger than the back of this. And then I'm going to select both of these and I am going to, it's not letting me do it because I probably haven't taken away that score line. There we go. Okay, so here we go. I had to take away the score line because you can't slice with uh, complex. Okay, so I've selected these two and I'm gonna hit slice. Slice is down here on the bottom um, and slice is basically a cutting feature. And what I'm doing there is I'm removing the back of the card. See that? And these are my peel aways and there's the back of the card that used to be there. So what I'm basically creating is a front a card front, okay? And I can do that with all of these and you can just delete these uh, other parts of the card. So I'll show you this again. Ungroup, take away the um, take away the envelope, get rid of the backing, all right? And then you are going to detach and take away the scoring. Then you're going to add under shapes over here, add a square, that you unlock. Mm. All right, now what's going on? Okay, here we go. You unlock and you stretch over to the back, exactly at the place where the score line was, which was approximately, that's here, okay? Select both, then slice. And then just peel away your sliced pieces and you have a card front. Now this could be cut on the Joy very easily or it can be cut on your Explore or Maker so easy. So um, this is, you know, a, just a simple trick and what it's going to do is going to force the um, the card to be not part of the back of the card. I'm going to show you how to create the back of the card as well. Okay, um, now you could do a couple of different things. You could take blank white cards and, um, and affix them to the blank, but then the background would just be white. What I like to do is find some really nice patterned paper and use... Um, patterned paper as the base of the card. And I usually find it in a 12 by 12. So I'm going to show you how to rework a 12 by 12 inch um, pa uh, piece of paper and make it into two A2 cards. Now, I'm not going to show you how to cut these out because it's pretty simple um, cutting out. I would cut them out under um, cardstock for intricate cuts. So let me move you down here okay so i found these this lovely paper this is from michael's called happy spring i got it in there hot by um and it's very cute it has some pretty nice um pretty nice pages there are a few that of things that maybe more or would be cutouts that you would use um but there's some really really nice patterns look at the easter bunnies i love this one here too see that and so you can just take a sheet of that paper i'm going to take a sheet i'm going to show you how to do this twice once you learn this trick you'll be making all kinds of cards um, in, in lots of different sizes. This is for the A2. Okay, so 
we're going to take a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. Sometimes the paper has a little extra edge on there so that it can be in the pad. You want to remove that because that will change the, um, the size of the paper. Okay. And I'm using this. This is a cutter, um, or a personal trimmer. I think it's what it's called. This one is from Cricut. Uh, you don't have to buy a Cricut one. There's all kinds of others that make them out there. I just happen to like this one. So we're going to take the 12 by 12 sheet of paper. Let's try to get up here a little bit more. And we are going to place it in under this, this part here, the guide, which is where the, this, uh, there's a small paper cutter here. Okay. And we're going to do uh, two cuts on this. We're going to cut it at 11 inches first. So it's a 12 by 12 sheet of paper. So 11 inches, we're going to cut off this strip of the paper. And we can save that for our scrap pile. Then we're going to turn the paper this way and we're going to align it at eight and a half inches. And we're going to take this piece off. Okay, so what we are have done is we have taken a 12 by 12 inch sheet of paper and turned it into an eight and a half inch, eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. Okay, now this is what the size paper that you'd put in a copier. This is also you can buy this size. Um, so I'm just showing you how to take a 12 by 12 and turn it into an eight and a half by 11. And don't forget that you should keep your scraps because you can always use scraps. And I keep my scraps in a bucket underneath my desk and uh, about once or twice a year, I'll go through them and give them away um, or use them or whatever. So that's what I do with my scraps. I never throw them away. Um, okay, so now we have an eight and a half by 11 inch sheet of paper. Let me show you that again. So here's the 12 by 12. I'm gonna put it under here. I'm going to align it to that 11 inches. Take off that small strip like this. Turn it, align it to eight and a half inches. Put the strip aside. And then we have eight and a half by 11. Well, don't you know eight and a half by 11 is actually uh, twice the size of two A2 cards. So you can get two cards out of one sheet of eight and a half by 11. So what you're going to do is then take your, your piece of paper that you've cut in half and you're going to slice it exactly in the middle at five and a half. So now I have two pieces, five and a half by eight, eight and a half, right? Yeah, eight and a half. I'm getting myself confused. Okay. You want to do the same thing with this, five and a half. And now I can put the trim away because I don't need it anymore. Now, granted, you can buy cards um, pre-made. You can do that. But this is a good trick to learn because um, you can turn anything into a card. And that's why, you know, when you find these pads of paper, they, uh, you know, you can look at it with the possibility of, oh, this could be a great card front or this could be a great card base. So I am just going to fold these in half like this. I crease it with my hand, but you can use your little uh, scraper or whatever you have that you want to use. Now let me do that again. So I'm just folding this in half, just like this. Scraper, if you want to make that really nice edge. And on my, um, on my maker this morning, I cut out these. So these are just the card fronts that I'm talking about. So these are the cards that we're doing. See, they're all done. And I, I've changed the, the front color. I did um, orange. I did this lavender. And I did yellow. And then I changed up the background. So this pretty... Uh, pink speckled pink um this green one that we talked about and there's a purple one and a gingham check 
So I have a bunch of those too. So I'm gonna just show you how to put these together using glue. So again, these aren't um, insert cards. The true nature of an insert card is that no glue is necessary. So this is more of a an A2, a simple A2 card that you've actually simplified even more, but you're nobody's gonna know it because you're using such beautiful papers. Now, some people have mentioned, well, why don't you cut out the front in a patterned paper? And the reason why I don't do that is that I find um, having a solid on the front of a patterned paper is easier to read. Um, and I like to find a patterned paper that's a little darker on the on the bottom. So here you go. So this is, you can really read the Happy Easter, even though this is yellow and this is purple um, underneath orange. So that's really easy to read. Um, so let's start by deciding which ones, which patterns we want. This is a great project for if you want to sit and, and do something with a grand um, or a little or something like that. You can just get these all cut out and, and just do the gluing. So here, this would look nice here. This would look cute with the Easter bunnies on the back and it says Happy Easter. So maybe we'll do that one. And then I have this one that's just Happy Easter. Let's see what it would look like. This, although the bunnies are going the other way. Do the bunnies go the other way on this side? No, let's not do that one. How about this? This looks pretty with the purple. And then my favorite one, the chicks coming out of the Easter eggs would look cute, I think. Yeah, that will look cute like this. So, as I'm making all my cards, I just put all my things aside and I got my glue. This is a glue that I use. You don't need to use this glue, but if you um, if you like it, I will put a link in my description of this video so that you can buy it if you want. It is available on Amazon and also on their, um, the it's called Barely Art Precision Craft Glue and it's also available on their website. Um, it's great glue. I really like it. it has it, it's good for car paper crafts and making cards. I like that it has a very um, fine tip. It even has an ultra fine tip that uh, comes with it usually when you purchase the set. So all we're going to do is turn this front piece over and we're going to start to glue um, the back of this card. Now, the important thing about glue any glue is is the amount you use um there are a lot of very uh fussy cuts here and so putting glue here is important but what you have to do is control the amount of glue that you're using because um, if you use too much it could cause your paper to wrinkle um and also it if you use too much, it will seep out of the sides of your cut and sometimes will leave uh, marks and you don't want that because people will recognize that it's glue that's seeped out. So definitely start with less, less is more. And if you need to add, then you can add, but you can, it's very hard to take away. All right, so I'm putting a bead of or a line of glue here around the edges. And I'm putting in, um, here comes my favorite, my favorite saying, you, you guys will do better because, um, you know, I'm just kind of going through the motions here for the camera, but, um, but you'll be a little more precise than I am being because you'll have more time and probably more patience than I do, so, than I have. All right, so I've got some glue on the back of this card. We're gonna take this card front, and you can do it either way, but I usually just place it this way onto the card. 
press down. See, no glue is seeping out from inside, and that's good. But if you have like a little piece, like for instance, right here, this little but uh, this little chickie is coming out. Just put a just a little tiny drop of glue there. I put too much, but there you go. <laughs> All right, so here you go. And then it's all set for you to um, hand write a little message on, okay? Let's show you that again. Let's do this one because I think it's really adorable. So flip it over and we're going to put glue um, here. all in the back of the letters, just like this. Hmm. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, right? That's my son who used to always say that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Last night he came to me and he said, Mom, can you make some spaghetti? Which is how my uh, my aunts and father would call spaghetti, spaghetti. He must have heard it somewhere because he said, Mom, will you make me some spaghetti? And then I said, yeah, of course. And then he said, uh, you make the best spaghetti, Mom. And I thought, what? he must have seen some video with you know, some Italian Americans or something. And he just thought it was funny the way they said spaghetti and um, he wanted spaghetti. <laughs> it was funny. Oh, last night. So um, here, here's the other thing. Um, he needs something to do in the summertime. He was doing a camp program, but he aged out of it. So um, with the, with the, stimulus money that's coming, I said to him, you know, I'd like to get you set up so you have a little job that you can do for the summer. And he said, um, okay, you know, what do you want to do? What can I do? That kind of thing. So I found this fella that um, has a slush business. Slushies are really big in the summertime. And he is, I think it's called Slush Kings or something like that. He's out of uh, East Boston. And, um, and he was selling one of his drink carts. And uh, so I was said, oh, okay, let, let me see about that. So I was able to pick one up for him. And so he loves, the thing about Owen is he loves soda and things that you buy in cans and bottles. I don't know why, he just really does. And so I thought this would be perfect for him. And, and I'm going to get permission from the city um, where he can just sort of sign up or sit out there during the concerts or during um, like the sporting events in one of our many, many parks and sell water and soda and Gatorade to people. I think it would be perfect for him because um, he'd get a lot of exposure to people and he's already started thinking, well, I need an umbrella and he's very excited. So we're, we're going to be doing that this summer with him. Um, and sorry, I'm getting off track, but, uh, I'm yakking again, but I was so excited about him and having a new little thing that he could learn. Maybe he'll, he'll make it all the way to ice cream, man. I don't know. He says no, but, um, I think he could, I think he could do it. Yeah, I think it would be a fun job. So that's it, folks. I mean, this is a pretty easy one. Look at all these cute designs. This one says Easter blessings. There is this one, which I used that green paper for. This one I used that speckled paper from. And again, um, it's just eight. It's just uh, eight and a half by eleven inch for the tops, and twelve by twelve. And I use patterned paper from Michaels. And I am going to give you this file so that it has. I think now. Six, seven, eight, nine. So I think that's nine. 
Um, Charlene, they're under simple holiday cards, but we've made an adjustment to them. And these are quick and easy. Yeah, it's a great project for a little person, too, you know, if they want to just make cards or whatever. Um, okay, you know what? Wow, quick. I, I didn't talk too much today. So we uh, have a, a short a shorter time, which is fine. And remember, tomorrow we're going to be doing our um, crepe paper. I want to show you one thing else. Um, I started working with some tissue paper too, because I like all kinds of paper. And I put together this really adorable like Easter garland. I can show you if you're interested on in how I did this. This also is not a a Cricut project. I just did it all by hand, but I thought it was kind of fun. Yes, right, right, Don. That's what that's what I said. You know, uh, what are you going to call it? And, and he said, I don't know. What should I call it? I'm like, even something that's simple, like Owen's drinks. <laughs> you know, and I can make you a hat and make you a shirt, and and uh, we can color the uh, color the drink cart, everything. Yay! That's lovely. We had a lot of people on this morning. So thank you so, so much for coming today. Um, we're going to see you again tomorrow to do our to do our crepe paper flower. So definitely tune in at 9 o'clock. Remember, all of these are available, um, all of these videos. So if you see something you like, such as this, or you saw something on my desk or whatever and you want to learn how to do it first check the youtube channel because there's a good chance if it's on my desk that i've done it or it's coming up so um so definitely check the youtube channel and subscribe while you're at it because we actually made uh 12,500 subscribers um actually a little bit more but we made the 12,005 uh just yesterday and my goal for the year is 25. I hope it's not going to be too much. 25,000 people um that are subscribed to my YouTube channel. So if you're not already subscribed, um then please please definitely do that and we have a couple of giveaways coming up so um get your mojo <laughs> I love it. That's kind of an inside joke though, right? Mo, Mo, that's what we call Owen, Mo and um Mo Juice. Yeah, I think he'll do really fabulous and I'll make sure to take his um take some pictures and maybe a video of when we do it. I think he'll really enjoy it and that's what I wanted to just kind of teach him some things uh on how to, you know, count back money and how to interact with uh with the public and how to be sociable and stuff like that so um after this video is over or if you're watching it on the rerun um go and look in the description of the video for all of these card fronts that i have made and get yourself making some cards um i do also have some print and cut cards that are coming up and i'm going to show you those those are easter ones really cute as well and um and yeah that's it thanks everybody um have a great day i hope you enjoy and we'll see you again tomorrow for our crepe paper Yay, thank you. Um, thanks, Susan. Everyone, have a great day. Take care.